Have you ever had chocolate pavlova layered with chocolate whipping cream and roasted sweet dark cherry sauce? If you have, we both know how delicious this is. If not, then follow this recipe to see how easy it is to put this layered meringue cake together. My name is Yelena, welcome to my kitchen, and I'm super excited to share this recipe with you. Let's start baking. So now we will start making our pavlova. I've already preheated my oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Celsius. And I've also traced two seven inch circles on my parchment paper. And then I flipped it upside down so that the cake doesn't touch the graphite from the pan. I have also uh, cleaned my bowl and my whisk with the vinegar because any traces of fat in your bowl will prevent the eggs from foaming up. Okay, so now we can start. So first we are going to add six large egg whites at room temperature into your mixer bowl set up with a whisk attachment. Okay, and we will whisk this on high until the eggs become foamy. So now that our eggs have foamed up, we're going to add one and a half a cup or 300 grams of white granulated sugar and try to find as fine of a sugar as you can. If you cannot, then just blitz it in some food processor, but it will get the eggs to absorb the sugar a lot better. So we will add this one tablespoon at a time and continue whisking until each tablespoon gets absorbed. Okay, so now that we have reached stiff peaks, I'll take this out, I will show you. Here we go, they're not falling off. Perfect, I'm going to add now a quarter teaspoon of salt, just a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Vanilla always helps with flavor, of course, that's what vanilla does. Okay, and we'll just incorporate this together. All right, there we go. It's nice and glossy. So now the secret, not so secret ingredient for a pavlova is always vinegar, and that's what gives it the marshmallow texture in the middle. Because we're making um, chocolate cake, chocolate pavlova, I am adding balsamic vinegar, and I have raspberry blush flavored vinegar. But you can use any kind of uh, balsamic vinegar if you have. If not, you can just use white vinegar. That, that will do it too. And now to make a chocolate pavlova cake, we will start by adding cocoa powder into our bowl. And cocoa powder is notorious for clumping, so we always have to sift it. So here I have two and a half tablespoons of dark cocoa powder. And then to that, we will add half a tablespoon of espresso powder. This is optional, and you can simply just use three tablespoons of cocoa powder instead, and you don't have to use the espresso. Now we will add one teaspoon of cornstarch, and this will also help with creating a soft marshmallow-like center because it prevents the egg whites from overcooking. So sift this all through together, and then make sure that it's well combined. And uh, we will now sift this again over the egg whites. Now we will add one and a half ounce or 45 grams of finely chopped dark chocolate. Now using a spatula, incorporate the dry ingredients into the meringue, making sure not to deflate it. So just go around the bowl, folding over until everything is combined. Now it's time to place our pavlovas onto the tray. I'm using a spoon because it's easier to move the spread. Try to place as even amounts as you possibly can. Okay, now that we have both of our pavlovas there, I am just going to spread them around a little bit so that they spread to the seven inch disc. I'm making these more flat than I would a regular pavlova because they will be stacked. So I want to have um, as flat to a surface as possible to put the whipped cream. And the cherry sauce. I'm excited for this dessert. Okay. So now that they are ready, 
I'm going to place them in the oven, but I will lower the heat to 250 degrees right away or 120 degrees Celsius. And I will bake them for one hour and 10 to one hour to 15 minutes. Then I will turn the oven off, leave them in for one hour and then open the oven slightly with um, like a spoon and then keep them in there for another two to three hours until they dry out completely. And in the meantime, while they're being baked, I'm going to show you how to make my roasted cherry sauce. The roasting of the cherries is not absolutely necessary, but it's so good. So don't skip it if you can. For the roasted cherries, you will need two and a half cups of fresh or frozen pitted cherries. I'm using frozen because that's what I had. But if you're using fresh, just make sure to pit them, of course. And then to this, we will add one teaspoon of vanilla bean paste or vanilla extract and two tablespoons of sugar. Make sure to coat them well and then spread them on a parchment lined baking tray. And then you will roast these at 425 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. To make the cherry sauce, we will start by adding quarter cup of water to a medium sized saucepan, followed by two tablespoons of sugar, and then one teaspoon of lemon juice, and one and a half a tablespoon of cornstarch. Combine this really well, making sure that there are no clumps of cornstarch left, and we will then cook this over low medium heat until the starch starts to thicken. Make sure to constantly whisk because this happens really fast. And now add the roasted or just fresh cherries and then cook this over medium heat for about eight minutes or so. Make sure to constantly stir it so that the cherries don't burn. And as you can see, it's thickened and the, our cherry sauce is ready. And now that it's ready, we will take it off the heat and then we will add one teaspoon of vanilla and then optional two tablespoons of rum. This makes it taste like chocolate cherry cordials. Mix it through and then you will set this aside to cool. So now we have our chocolate pavlovas ready. I took them off the parchment paper very carefully with an offset spatula because they are meringues and they can break. So we have to be very gentle when we move them. And now we're going to make some chocolate whipping cream to go on top. And to do that, we will start by whipping two cups of cold whipping cream. And then add one third cup of sifted icing sugar, a third of a cup of sifted cocoa powder, and then half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mix it at first on low speed and then gradually increase, making sure to incorporate well with the spatula occasionally if you see that it's not quite combined. And whisk this on high until it falls off the spatula but it's not over whipped. As you can see here, this is ready. And now it's time to decorate. Start with the chocolate whipping cream and apply about half of it. And then you can use an offset spatula to spread it around. And then you will also add, after this, about half of the cherries as well. Add the next layer on top and continue until it's all finished. And now for the best part of any dessert, the taste test. I'm so excited. Shmilakto meringues are notoriously difficult to cut, but that doesn't matter because they still taste delicious. Okay, let's try it. I'm excited for this. Mm, the meringue is crunchy. The whipping cream is not too sweet and those cherries are divine. Thank you so much for watching. But before you leave, make sure to click like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.